Whether you love them or hate them, pastel pencils are a very hard medium to work in. They are very soft and fragile, they smudge easily, create a mess and it can be very hard to create a lot of detail in your drawings. If you are someone that is used to working in coloured pencils, you might find pastels a bit of a shock because they are such a soft and loose medium to work in. I've been working with pastels for quite a long time now and I have some great tips that I would like to share in today's video to help you get the most out of your pastel pencils. It can be very tempting to apply a lot of pressure when you're using pastel pencils because they are a very soft medium and not the best for creating details. So a lot of artists think that in order to create high levels of details or strong colours, they need to press really hard onto the paper. But that is something that you want to avoid doing and instead it is best to build up your layers. Pastel paper is a lot more grainy and textured than coloured pencil paper so it can take a lot of layers. And also pastels will blend and soften out with the more layers you add so there's really no need to apply hard pressure onto the paper. By building layers you add a lot more depth and dimension than you would by applying heavy pressure and burnishing colours into the paper. Hard pressure onto your pastel pencils also increases the likelihood that you would damage the pencils. Remember I said that pastels are very fragile so they won't take a lot of pressure on the lead. By creating smooth and soft layers you will really get the most out of your pastel pencils and can create some beautiful tones and colours. I find that with the more layers I add, I can really concentrate on getting in a lot of contrast and value into my pastel drawings and like I said they are very easy to blend with a lot of different tools and it's also very easy to go back over areas with lighter pencils to add in those highlights and specific pencil details. Paper that is commonly used for pastels is a lot different to other pencil mediums, it's a lot thicker, grainy and textured than most other types of papers, so it's really important that you use paper that is suitable for pastels. Pastel paper has a lot of tooth to it, it's very similar texture to sand paper and the reason why it's a lot more grainy and rougher is because pastel is a loose medium and you need paper with a lot of texture to hold those pastel layers. If your paper is too soft and not suitable for pastels, then the paper won't have anything to hold on to. It will just slip straight off the paper and you won't get a nice result. There are lots of paper brands suitable for pastels, but the paper I like to use is the Pastel Matte Paper by Claire Fontaine. It's a fantastic brand of paper and this paper block has five different colours as well. I would also recommend buying pastel paper that includes some glassine paper or buying this separately. Glassine paper protects the paper and images drawn onto the paper as it acts as a barrier between the paper and your hands and it helps prevent smudging of colour and also grease transfer. You can also use some baking paper which is a soft non-sticky paper that you can rest your hand onto. As I said a little earlier on in the video, you really need to be careful with your pencil pressure and there are lots of reasons why you want to be using a soft pencil pressure. Firstly, as I said, pastels are a very delicate medium, they won't handle a lot of pressure on them and excessive pressure on the pencils risks the likelihood of breakages and can even damage the tooth of the paper. Soft pressure is essential for building up layers gradually and layers are important to get in a lot of depth and dimension into your drawings. Also with more layers that you add the easier the pastels will blend so you'll be able to get smooth and soft blending and subtle tones of colour. Because pastel pencils are an extremely soft and delicate medium they are not the best for creating details so it's important that you are gentle on the lead. They won't retain a sharp point for very long so if you go in and apply heavy pressure onto the pencil they will become blunt very quickly and you'll have to keep sharpening them. A hard pressure on the pencils will also flatten the colours and make your drawings look very flat and won't bring them to life. You want your drawings to look three dimensional so it's important that you have all those different colours, hues and tones. 
Shading and values is one of the most important parts of pastel drawings. Shading is a great way that you can incorporate a lot of tones, shadows and highlights, as well as transition colours from one area to another. Values will really help you to add contrast and definition into your drawings. Let's first take a look at shading. When using pastel pencils, it's really important to create a lot of depth and dimension in your drawings. You don't want your drawing to look flat and washed out, so it's important that you try to incorporate different colors that will help you to create some mid-tones. The trick with pastels though, is that you don't wanna to add too many colors. Pastels will blend very easily into each other, so if you have too many colors on your paper, as they start to blend, colors can become very muddied, so it's important that you get the right balance between having enough shading and overdoing it. I would try to focus on your main colours and then add in some core tones such as the light, mid and dark tones. It's also important to add in some shadows into your drawings because shadows can really help to make a drawing stand out. With values, you want to create that transition between light, medium and dark tones because this will add a lot of contrast into your drawings. By emphasising highlights and the darkest areas, you can make your drawings become three-dimensional and they will really pop. There are a lot of great tools that you can use for blending out pastel pencils. A lot of artists just simply use their fingers, which is a great way to blend out pastels, but you do need to be careful with this because your hands and fingers do contain a lot of oil. If those oils mix with the pastels, it can create smears on the paper and ruin your drawings. So always make sure you wash your hands and dry them properly before you blend. I find the best tools for blending pastels is blending stumps, which are just made out of paper. You can get different sizes which are suitable for different size drawings. You can also use tissue papers for blending out pastels, but because the paper is quite a rough texture, it can easily tear tissue paper. You also want to use a soft, untextured tissue paper so that you don't transfer patterns onto your drawing. When you're blending, it's important to blend out the pastels very softly. They should blend out very easily and over blending can really dull down the colours. I also find that blending in circular motions is the best way to get smooth results. Circles don't have any stop or start lines, so you can easily soften down colours. If you're blending in a back and forth motion, it can create stop and start lines in your drawings, so I find circular motions are best. Creating details with pastel pencils is a very tricky thing to do because like I said, pastels are so soft and they will become blunt very quickly. Trying to create and retain a sharp point is essential for getting in those all important details. I would recommend using a sharpener designed for pastel pencils, so a sharpener that is a little bit wider than most handheld sharpeners. If you're finding that the pencil is not sharpening to a fine point, then you can use some sandpaper to Gently sharpen around. To retain its sharp point for as long as possible, I would use very soft shading and pencil motions and also rotate the tip of the pencil to cover every angle and stop one side from becoming blunt. It's very important to try and use sharp pastel pencils for details because if your pastels are really blunt, then when you try to add in details, the lines will be very fuzzy and thick, whereas if the pencils are sharp, the lines will be a lot more crisp. Pastels are notorious for smudging and very difficult to fix. Because they are such a loose medium, as soon as the pastel drawing comes into contact with anything, the pastel will transfer over to that surface. If you accidentally touch your pastel drawings, you'll probably pick up a pastel residue onto your hands or smudge your drawing. Fixing your pastel drawings is very important to protect them, but it has to be done in a very careful and specific way. You must use a fixative spray designed for pastel work, and it is best to use a small amount of fixative in between layers to minimise drawings dulling. There will be some darkening of colours and pigment fall from the paper, so it's important that when you frame your pastel work, you leave a gap between the paper and the glass to allow that pastel powder to fall down without ruining 
ruining the artwork. It's also really important that you use a high quality fixative that is alcohol based with a high fixing effect that is non-yellowing, age resistant and quick drying as well. There are a lot of great brands out there suitable for fixing pastels but I would definitely recommend to look around to find the best quality spray. So those are my top tips for using pastel pencils and creating artwork with pastels. I really hope that you did find this useful and if you have any other tips for using pastels then don't forget to leave a comment below because this can really help other people out. If you are new around here then don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you never miss a video from me. Also make sure you give this video a big thumbs up so I know you enjoyed this and of course I look forward to seeing you all in my next video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!